What have you been doing the past couple months before yesterday? Stressing Evan and James the fuck out. were you in that process other than telling James and Evan that this is wrong? Um, I'll tell you what, not as involved as I wanted to be, but probably more involved than I should have been. I don't know. I've never made an album before. One at a time, if you have it handy. Yeah, so we learned a lot in this album making process. Right. Evan and James learned their lesson in letting me be involved in the final edits for Matriarch, and then they didn't send me anything else for final edits. <laughs> These poor guys. <laughs> I, you'll remember, we did these like stomp claps to go in the like big breakdown at the final part of the song. I thought you were talking about the word Black. flam. Like yeah. that, this yeah. sounds like flam. you'd find yeah. oh, it. Oh, flam, again. like the the flam. Flam. no, flam. Yeah. Because we didn't record it to a click track, though, like the downbeats for all of that were not there. And so poor Evan, I think James told me he spent like six or six and a half hours, like cutting and condensing the stomps and then the claps and then pasting them where the downbeat would like should have would have been. And he sent it to me and it sounded not because Evan, not because Evan made it sound this way, but by virtue of the fact of having to cut and paste and crop these things, like it just sounded so weird. Ready and like it was so manufactured sounding, and that song is the opposite of manufactured. And so I was like, oh, and then, oh, 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 oh. Mm. I don't. Want... At first, I said we were good. Final cut. And then I listened to it the next morning and I was like, I hate this. I hate those. They're not, they're not the song. And so I was like, what are our other options? And Evan was like to have nothing or to have like rim shots on the snare. And that's it. And I'm like, let's, let me hear all three options. So then he has to make a version with just the rim shots and then nothing. And I'm like on the phone with him and I'm like, well, what does Joe Kyle think? And Evan's like, he thinks we should go with, I don't even remember it. And I was like, well, what is, what does James think? He's like, James thinks this. I'm like, okay, let me sleep on it. And that, this poor, these poor people. Put it, so then they sent me nothing else for final edits. And then it was just, here it is. Well, I just finished listening in my car. And if I'm going to be crying, you're going to be crying with me. Um, guys, thank you so much. I'm really excited. <laughs> Can you tell? Um, we're up to 150 ticket sales. Um, so hit the goal number and, um, I'm going to go inside now and upload everything to release and finish with all the copywriting. And, um, we're going to have a show on Friday and an album uh, available on Saturday. So thank you so much. I'm very happy and I hope y'all are too. And I love you both very much. I knew I didn't want to just announce on the internet that there was going to be an album released. I wanted to also put a like period on that with a release party and kind of kick down the door and come in and be like, here it is. Bitch. I mean, because I, I think, again, it's so, people are so overwhelmed with so much information at all times that I wanted to do something physical and tangible to go along with the release. And that is a party in my mind at a brewery. I don't know the background kind of in planning things. Sometimes I forget how much work I think like, oh, I've done this a million times, like organizing an event, although maybe a different event than an album release. Like I've done that before. Like that's not 
hard. It's just a lot of coordinating a lot of different pieces and that takes time and dealing with people and waiting for responses just takes time. And so I, the only thing that made it stressful really was from the day we knew we would be at Hub City to the day of execution. It, it was just a lot of stuff condensed into a pretty short period of time. Day of the album release party. Yeah. Like what's going through your mind? Are you going to work? Like no. basically kind of just walk us through the day. And I wasn't really. S- no, I was stressed. I'm lying. I was stressed. Namely because I did not have the dress I wanted. If I, in a very unfortunate series of events, I had the dress I wanted in the wrong size. So I was really stressed about that. I weirdly kept having this feeling that like Hub City is going to call and they're going to be like, oh, so sorry. We totally forgot we had something else booked and like you're canned. I don't know. They're very professional. They have like a calendar that wouldn't, you know, but it just, I don't know. I was kind of running through worst case scenarios when I woke up. And then just feeling like, are people actually going to show up? Like, I knew what our ticket sales were, but that doesn't always mean that people end up being there. So I was nervous that, like, the number of bodies wasn't going to match the number of tickets. And then as it's getting closer and closer, like, what's kind of going through your brain? Like, <clears throat> what what's going through your mind? Is it still the same? anxieties or do, do those start to shift like is there like, something specific that you start worrying about like no i'm this is really ungracious and i know but it's just the honest truth like then i just started getting annoyed because there's nothing to be done right like we're just then waiting for the clock to strike midnight kind of thing but everyone is so excited and wants to be helpful and they're like what can i do do you need anything it's like no i'm good thank you do you need anything? No, no, thank you. What can I do to help you? Go away. <laughs> like it just, uh, it's, a, it's that thing like, you know, when you have your older sibling or whatever and they're just like breathing wrong hmm? and you're like, I'm going to punch you in the face just because you're breathing wrong. Like it's that feel like they're not doing, no one's doing anything wrong. Like I am just physically annoyed because it's me. Like this is a me problem sort of deal. And then it, then it was literally just, kind of trying to wait, um, wait till we took the stage, you know, like get dressed, brush your teeth, zhuzh your hair kind of stuff. So. I can't get them out of all your group vibes. Maybe you have to brace on red. No. I hope that, I know that we're going to have a crowd of really supportive friends like you here tonight and the Jackson music scene in general. So above all else, like have fun. Like that's number one tonight is to have fun and hope Y'all have a blast up there on stage in your own acts, and then, uh, like, let's just love this tonight. Sounds like we're ready for a show. Thank you for coming out. Thank you very much. You love City for hosting us this evening. We played it like we had rehearsed it. I mean, that's, I don't know, I think. The crowd was way bigger than I ever dreamed was possible. And these musicians are better than I ever could have dreamed of working with.
so yeah, I mean, we played the show like we had rehearsed all the songs, like nothing went wrong. Everything sounded great. The crowd was super fun. Um, and yeah, we had, we had a good time. The worst part is being human and like, why do our brains do this thing where it's like, everything is going so well, but the black tablecloths aren't on the tables. Like, why is that something I know that like I'm on stage and that's bothering me. Why am I distracted by something that is so unimportant? Like that does not matter. Especially like, when everybody's having, clearly having a Everyone's great time. having a great time. I'm having a great time and yet I'm a human. And so I'm going to let my, like, I don't know why we do that to ourselves. I found myself like focused in on and having to actively like talk myself out of going like, no, no, <laughs> shut that down. Cause who gives a shit? And like focus on the amazing part that's going on. I think, I think the best part of the night is surprising people. Like there are, there were a handful of people from my day job that were there who like know that I do this, but who hadn't ever come to a show. And I mean, they picked a great show to come to. <laughs> I think that's maybe my favorite thing is like, or people around town who were there who I like vaguely know, but don't know super well, or they're a friend of a friend sort of thing. Um, and they're like blown away. They're shocked, right? That to me is always the high point, right? Cause I, I kind of want to be the underdog. I kind of like being the unexpected thing. Um, so yeah, I think, I think seeing people connect with the songs, it's nice to see the things that I write generally like pretty isolated or just with one other person, like make people react in the real way. That's cool. I don't know how you feel, but... I'm good emotional. Yeah. It seems like she was handling it pretty well. She said she was really nervous. She doesn't show it. No. I was very emotional last time we talked. Mm -hmm. It was an emotional week. It was a very emotional week. This I one think... seems less so, or at least yeah. in a different way. Yeah, I think, and I was thinking about that all day today while, while we were building a fence, an emergency fence. Um, because I'm trying to figure out why this doesn't feel, and like yesterday I thought for sure at some point I would cry and I did almost, I was like starting to tear up when I was talking to Jason after the show. Like he gave me the nicest, biggest, like kind of fatherly figure hug, you know? And, and he was just like, I'm so proud of you. And it was just, I started to tear up and then someone came up to say, Hey, and so I pulled it together. And even today, I'm having a little bit of a hard time, like, kind of stopping and letting my... I feel a little numb today, maybe. And maybe a little numb yesterday. Maybe it's just because we've been living with these songs for so long that it's not new. I'm, I don't feel very emotional today. I think that's a surprise. I mean, you spent one night with people that you spend one night with every yeah like that week was a week with that's true the same people in the same room mm. putting something together that's my observation mm. that's an astute observation <clears throat> yeah you're right yeah i don't know i think maybe that's a sign of health though of like i can continue to do this because i think if i were emotionally wrecked after last night it would be hard to like because life has to go on, right? Like you have to wake up in the morning and build a fence. <laughs> not every day. <laughs> you have to wake up in the morning and like, do your laundry. You know, like you can't, mm. not every day can 
So maybe it's a good thing that this didn't feel as like Mount Everest. No, what else do I want to say? Um, Go stream the matriarch of the album. Maybe the feeling I'm left with today, like the day after, is like, yeah, and I want to do that again. I think getting everything recorded, I felt a great release of mm-hmm. like, okay, I birthed the thing. And now this kind of felt like uh, like a, a state football championship. Like, it's great, and there will be another. We, like, we're excited. It's not the end. <laughs> You already started writing this stuff. I've been writing this whole time, and I have a handful of things that I'm really jazzed about um, that we've been playing. Like, there's a couple of songs that are just really um, still on my mind that I still really want to have produced that I think will, but don't fit this album. I think maybe we'll do like a seven or eight track different genre, I guess, altogether um, and put something out. Actually, okay, can I give a pitch? And I can't take any credit for this. My friend Jordan Jeffers from high school wrote a fantasy trilogy, and it took him a decade to do. And he wrote this, like, really, really lovely, just like, you know, I finished writing this thing, and it's a trilogy, and it's three books, and it's the last ten years of my life, and, uh, the best way you can support your artist friends are, and he gave, like, a list, right? And it really just ends up being for independent artists of all shapes and sizes and varieties and skills. Like, the number one way to show you care is share it. Like, consume it, and then whatever you love about it, share it with someone else, right? Like, independent artist in your life who you want to support. For musicians, it is very important to, like, follow on social media because booking agents and venues look at your numbers to see... If they want to book you. But more importantly, like if you love a song, it's like a recipe. Be like, I just made this chocolate chip cookie. I know you'll like this chocolate chocolate chip cookie too. Like send the song to someone and be like, I love this. You'll love it too. That's like like downloading on iTunes, whatever, right? But like sharing your stuff is the most important, I think. <laughs>